Merry Christmas everybody, Stippling Vaughn, and I thought I'd show you guys what I got for Christmas. These are called Coons Classics, and how you got them in the 70s was, you would get two of these books, and you'd, they come packaged back to back, and then you'd have a cassette at the top. And what you do is you take the cassette, put it in your tape player, and then you would read along to the story as it was told. And <clears throat> so, but these were all classic stories. And you can see by the condition that these books, okay, are not in pristine condition. Quite honestly, I don't care. I, uh, when I had them, I read them and I read them and I read them. And this is, these books, uh, were one of my fundamental openings into uh, comics and into reading stories and this these books actually ended up leading to me reading some of the classic novels uh, many of which you can't read today because uh, it might have one or two words that might be deemed offensive by one or two other people and as a result <clears throat> it has to be canceled okay so now these were based off of novels and quite honestly uh, because I've read a couple of these books uh, like the actual novels the originals um, these books uh, stay quite true to the original books okay so they stay true to the source material um, the one significant difference is um, because of storytelling and the time constraint of only having about 24 pages, as a result, um, they sometimes omit characters. Um, uh, in this book, there uh, we go. We have, obviously there's Ke Queequeg, but there is the also the Indian harpooner, and I believe he's omitted from this. Uh, comic book but one of the things that really why I read these over and over as opposed to <coughs> what was on a spinner rack is I'm going to show you okay the paper quality was higher the color print quality was higher okay so this is Moby Dick okay this is Spider-Man okay these books came out between 77 and 79 okay this came out in 1976 okay one year prior to it okay you can see a distinct difference okay even with this aging okay you can see that the paper quality is higher than here as a result you take a look a perfect example of these reds see how these reds are so strong okay whereas here the red is faded it's not faded because of how it was printed that was because they used cheaper paper so as a result they had to go <clears throat> the red would only be about that strong okay overall you can see your difference with your books or with your print quality so these having much higher quality of printing resulted in catching your eye and uh, going through these books more so than the others in fact <clears throat> when I first started to get comics uh, mainstream comics um, had trouble with them because of reading these for so long one of the books that I liked so much was there was one Batman versus the JSA uh, where the Justice League, Justice Society of America, had to stand trial, and here it was here a uh, Batman's journal uh, was merely a uh, elaborate plot, uh, <clears throat> or a mat. Or he wrote in his diary. He basically wrote out this elaborate scheme that the Justice Society would be put on trial, and it all came down to as a means to catch. Uh, Dagaton. So this one here was Moby Dick. Okay. I had this one as a kid. Another one I had 
as a kid was Swiss Family Robinson. This one here, I read over and over, okay? Um, when I lost the copy, <clears throat> it was in much worse shape than this one is. This one's not in great shape, but I'll tell you right now, this one's in pristine shape compared to the quality of the one I had. Uh, because uh, these books, I when I had these books, it was prior to discovering how you should protect it with uh, a bag and a board, and I read the hell out of these things. These things were literally falling apart. Um, again, uh, the reason why I know that these books kept close to the source material is I read this one so much, uh, my mom ended up giving me her copy of Swiss Family Robinson to read, and I did read it, and this book did stick fairly, very close to the source material as uh, detailed as it was. Um, because this book was, because these comics had limited space, but they're trying to stay true to the source material, you take a look at these books, okay? Okay, you take a look at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, nine panels. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight panels. One, two, three, four, five, six. I mean, you take a look at your one, two, three, four, five, six. It averaged eight panels. Per page okay in today's day and age that'd be unheard of unless you're George Perez and we all know George Perez would do a ten, more than eight pa panels <clears throat> or in a page when given the chance okay but this book kept very close to the source material um, these books were originally produced in Canada uh, I'm sorry in uh, Spain using Spanish artists um, because they're not printed in Spain, using uh, and using Spanish artists, unfortunately, uh, they didn't put uh, down who the artists were. So I'll never know who the artists were. Um, I'd probably have to, <clears throat> unless you lived in, in in Spain, I doubt I'd ever find out who did these books and whether there's any, any uh, pages page art available. Most I doubt it. Um, one thing I want to show you guys though is with this book to prove what I'm saying here is look at this I'm gonna bring this in close you can see where this boy is saying a ship at last a ship has come okay but you can see that the cut and paste job that went over what was written in Spanish has shifted. You can see right there that was originally written in Spanish and then they did a cut and paste over the lettering and it shifted for printing. <clears throat> and thank you to Wikipedia we know that these books were printed in multiple languages that may not even be Spanish, it might be a different language, but the important thing is, is that, again, thanks to Wikipedia, we know that these books were made in Spain, and that's the reason why it has, I believe it has the storytelling, or not the storytelling, but it has the uh, art style that does. And this art style was influential to me in that it's the art style that I would come on there you go it's an art style I'd, I'd uh, try to stay true to even now another book has child Robin Hood and 20,000 leagues beneath the sea now I was very fortunate for my girlfriend she also got me two that I've never read before the Adventures of Huckleberry Finn and Alice in Wonderland, Looking Through the Looking Glass. So, uh, got two new ones to enjoy. Um, there's 32 books in total. Uh, I would encourage anybody to check them out. Uh, most importantly, the reason why I'd advise you guys to uh, in look into these, if you have children, and you have a child who is uh, 
interest in good stories, uh, interest in the classics, but maybe uh, discouraged. Uh, like I said, these books stick very true to the source material. Okay, so when you read one of these comics, and then you go read <clears throat> the novel itself, okay, you'll find it's very true. It stays very true, even though even though that this is an abridged version. So, but I was uh, consider. I mean, I will. I'm. I. I like these books so much. I'm going to be uh, over the years uh, looking at getting the rest of these. I mean, let's see, Heidi. Mm, maybe not. Little Women? Mm, I don't think so. But The Phantom Ship, The Pirate, The Mysterious Island, King Solomon's Mines, The Three Musketeers, okay? I'm going to be interested. Ivanhoe, I'll be uh, looking for those. Um, so, but like I said, this is what I got for Christmas. I was very excited. Uh, she said, when she told me, she goes, what do you want for Christmas? I just gave her the whole list of these. And it didn't matter whether I got the whether I got these or not. It, it didn't matter what all I got for, for Christmas. Uh, this is what I wanted, and I got what I wanted. So, And on top of that, lastly, I used this Spider-Man book to show the example of, uh, of uh, the print quality. But take a look at this book, okay? 1976, Batman's fighting the lizard, and he's fighting Stegosaur. Um, but look at around it. Christmas wreaths, Christmas garland. We open up the book, and it's a snowy Christmas. And Spider-Man's fighting the lizard. And then he goes... And look what he does. And he flannel says, well, let's, well, first, we're going to set your tree up with it where it belongs. Okay? Just that statement alone. And that first word bubble. <laughs> Explains everything. I mean, would DC or Marvel have the balls to do a Christmas themed comic book. Don't have it about Christmas and the birth of Christ, but why don't we have an issue where Superman or Batman's fighting their bad guys? And it just happens to be right before Christmas time. So we can draw the Christmas wreaths and the garland and the <clears throat> and all the decorations. No, 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 no. We can't do that. We 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 can't do that. We we might we might butt hurt some lefty SJWs who everything's offensive to them and everything has to be canceled. So we got to bow down to them because they special because somebody told them they're special even though they know they'll never be special. Okay, that's what SJWs are. And I feel it is horrible how these entertainment companies that gave us our childhood uh they are allowing these people that would never buy their book in the beginning, okay? They never would have bought this book, okay? They were never going to buy it. No matter how much you curtailed it to them, they were never going to buy it. But yet you're listening to them and they're, you're allowing them to dictate to you, okay? Ronald Reagan said in the 80s, we will not negotiate with terrorists, SJWs are cultural terrorists, and the corporations are bowing down to them, thinking that's what we want, and that's not what we want, okay? We want morals and values. We want heroes that inspire us, okay? Not cry and moan and complain and blame everybody else for their failures, okay? I want comics that have action. And every single time I go into a comic book store and I pick up a DC book or I pick up a Marvel book, I'm not seeing it. And it's sad. And then with what Mar what DC's done with making all their characters gay, you crossed the line with me when you did the uh, making Tim Drake gay. 
It's like, nah, I'm done with you. And I have not bought a single DC book since then. Okay, so DC, you want to play the blame game? Okay, blame yourselves. Blame the SJWs. You bowing down to them. And guess what? I'm not going to spend my money on your books anymore. Okay, I'd rather spend my money on these books. And I'll get more entertainment out of these than I would out of the garbage you're putting out. I'm sorry about going into the rant at the very end, but like I said, it just, <clears throat> it got me how this is a, all it is, is garland and wreaths, okay? Spidey's fighting two bad guys at Christmas time. He's not talking about the birth of Christ. He's not, he's not teaming up with Santa. It's just the holiday season. But Spider-Man, Batman, Superman, they can't even do that anymore. And that's sad. So sad. These are companies that want to entertain us and they want to make money. But they can't even do something like this. That's sad. So sad. So guys, hope you liked the video. If you liked it, Hit the like button. I'd appreciate it. Subscribe, share, okay? Helps everything out. Till then, take life one dot at a time, guys.